Jailed for journalism, not in London, but in Egypt. The decision by an Egyptian court to sentence Australian journalist Peter Grester and his Al Jazeera colleagues for several years has caused shockwaves around the globe. But despite heavyweight condemnation, the Egyptian government's ruling out any early intervention from the president. Grester's family say they're dismayed by the heavy prison sentences handed to their son and his Al Jazeera colleagues. Middle East correspondent Hayden Cooper filed this report for the ABC's foreign correspondent program. The verdict, seven years jail for each of them and three more for Baha. Seven years for Peter Grest, a repent Bahus, and five other six defendants present. My God. Oh. My God. Oh, Sorry. That's crazy. Finish. That's crazy. That's uh. absolutely crazy. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> I thought we were prepared for the unexpected. Oh. It's absolutely unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I've got to take this call. Lois and Eurus Gresta had all but convinced themselves this would be Peter's last day in jail. The result is incomprehensible. Back in the court in Cairo, Mike is in despair. He's almost trampled by photographers reacting to the shocking sentences. Mohammed Fahmy struggles as police try to drag him away. They attempt to close down all reporting, but there's time for a final word from Mike. I'm totally gutted. It's um, devastating. It's the death of democracy in Egypt. Outside the court, family and journalists shake their heads in disbelief. What did they do? They were journalists doing their work. We've seen the videos, nothing there to incriminate them. And it's just, you know, they're trying to send a message to other journalists to silence any voices of dissent. I'm gutted, devastated. I mean, it's difficult to come up with words to describe how I'm feeling. It definitely wasn't something I was expecting. Unbelievable. Were you expecting an acquittal? I was hoping for an acquittal. It's difficult to have too many expectations, but I can honestly say I wasn't expecting that. Controlling the media and silencing critics has been practiced by every Egyptian government, but the El Sisi regime has taken repression to a new extreme level. The Al Jazeera verdicts represent a harsh warning to all journalists. Watch what you say if you don't want to end up in Torah prison. Seven years he will, he will keep in the prison seven years? For what? Can you, one of you tell me for what? Not only picture, tell me for what? There is no hope in the judicial system. We had hope in the judicial system. Now we know there is no hope. For Mawa Muhammad, tears and more to come. A few hours before she was planning her wedding. Now she's speechless. It's enough, thank you. Well, the verdict has been widely criticised by Western governments and the United Nations. But a short while ago, Egypt's President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi declared he would not interfere with judicial rulings. President Sisi, el-Sisi says Egyptian authorities would respect the independence of the courts. We will not interfere in judicial matters because the Egyptian judiciary is an independent and exalted judiciary. If we desire strong state institutions, we must respect court rulings and not comment on them even if others don't understand these rulings. The Australian government's been one of the most vocal critics and it's given the most senior Egyptian diplomat in the country a not-so-diplomatic dressing down. Karen Binney reports from Canberra. 
He's Egypt's top man in Australia. What are you expecting? Hostile reaction from uh, department officials today? The ambassador's in Cairo, so his deputy's been called in for a diplomatic dressing down. We are utterly dismayed by this verdict and appalled by the severity of the sentence. Julie Bishop wants presidential intervention. Having seen the evidence, we just cannot understand how this verdict was reached. It's the message Australia wants the First Secretary to take back to Cairo. The Australian Government will continue to make uh, intercessions at every level with the Egyptian Government uh, and elsewhere to try to ensure that Peter Grester and his colleagues are swiftly released. The Greens want trade sanctions, but neither the government or Labor are entertaining that idea. It's a time for diligent, calm and focused diplomacy. It's what Australia owes the Gresty family. Other countries like the UK, Netherlands and United States are also shocked at the case. It's a chilling and draconian sentence. And, and you know, it's, it's deeply disturbing to see uh, in the midst of Egypt's transition. Australia doesn't have a prisoner swap or extradition treaty with Egypt. The government believes the best chance of an early release is a presidential pardon. That'll take careful diplomacy and time. Karen Binney, ABC News, Canberra. Amro Ali is a Middle East analyst with the University of Sydney, currently based in Alexandria. Amro Ali, welcome to the world. The Egyptian authorities do appear to be digging in. Uh, President al-Sisi has defended the Al Jazeera decision, accusing those who criticised the judgment of lacking respect. That would seem to suggest he's not taking too much notice of the storm of protests from around the world, and most importantly, I suppose, from the United States too. Yes, it's, it's quite unfortunate, and it's quite predictable that he would do that, because what we've seen uh, in the past year is an alliance of uh, the, uh, the old um, institutions of the regime come together. And he's probably saying that because he doesn't want to uh, alienate uh, the judiciary. And we also have to remember that Egypt uh, operates in the, in the form of a, uh, not a dictatorship, but a dictatorship of institutions with a democratic veneer. So they're all competing against each other, which on the, on the surface looks quite petty. And it actually is quite petty as well. So are you saying that the judiciary in Egypt these days are simply trying to curry favour with the authorities or are they feeling intimidated by the people running the country now? I don't think they're intimidated, but what happens is that uh, all these institutions have their, uh, their fiefdoms and they, and they want to protect it uh, by any means necessary. And so they are, the, the judiciary has always been a very wild card. While they are very uh, uh, pro-state and they always want to maintain the image of a strong merciless Egypt, but at the same time they do not like executive interference, uh, which we would see ju generally during the elections uh, when they don't like uh, elections being rigged. But that's not because uh, they're transparent or fair, but it's because uh, they want to be control of the, in control of the process. To anyone in a mature democracy, the conduct of this case was nothing short of a crude farce. The evidence was laughable, the behaviour of the judge reprehensible, the ability of the defence to mount a case close to non-existent. Is this typical of the administration of justice in Egypt these days? Uh, I think it's, it's... We're talking about decades of, uh, of, of an education system that has uh, been uh, disemboweled and produced uh, the, the current crop that we see today in the judiciary. Uh, because in, in Australia, the judiciary or the, the law schools are the highest uh, discipline that you can study. In Egypt, it's the lowest thing. In fact, to be a lawyer here is, is quite a stigma. So it's not, uh, it's not to say that um, all judges rule uh, unfairly. There have been cases where they've been uh, quite fair, and especially the more senior judges tend to be more um, disciplined than the, than the middle-aged and the lower ones who are trying to make their mark to, to rise, uh, rise to the top. And this comes at the expense of people's lives and, and families, too, unfortunately. The president's office says uh, President al-Sisi will not be able to pardon the journalists if he chooses to do so until any appeal has been dealt with. That would seem to suggest that uh, Peter Grester and his colleagues could be in jail now for quite some time uh, as uh, Egyptian justice, the wheels of Egyptian justice grind on. 
Well, because the, um, the Ramadan is coming, so that's going to delay uh, the, the appeals process. And then you have the judge's vacation in August, which delays it further. And, uh, and, and, and factually, that is correct. Uh, the, the head of state cannot pardon someone until the appeals process has finished. And that can take months uh, or even up to a year. However, given the gravity of the situation, I would be surprised if uh, um, Peter Greist was still in Egypt by the end of the year. Why so? Uh, the Sisi presidency has to legitimize his um, regime on the international platform. And he also has to brandish uh, progressive credentials to state actors around the world. Uh, to keep uh, someone like Peter Greist in, in Egypt would be quite suicidal in the, in the long run uh, because it would just keep uh, showing up in the spotlight. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry was very quick to criticise the, uh, the judgment and the convictions, uh, saying that a, a risk of miscarriage of justice becoming the norm in Egypt was uh, a consequence. This is fairly significant given that uh, the Egyptian military would be in very dire straits indeed without the billions of dollars in financial support from the United States. Is it possible that it would require a threat from Washington to turn off that tap uh, to get the Egyptian authorities to think again about this miscarriage of justice? I think the state has become uh, quite cocky at the moment because you have uh, the Saudis and Kuwaitis and Emiratis who are offering financial aid towards Egypt. Uh, however, uh, Egypt's economy, at the end of the day, is not an oil-based economy. It, it depends on tourism. It depends on uh, investment. It depends on trade. Uh, these factors cannot uh, operate in this environment that's happening. So the only thing that gives me hope uh, for Peter Greece's case is that uh, the this, this situation is not sustainable to continue like this. Admiral Ali, we better leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me.